A U.S. doctor says that he wanted to serve women and be the very best, and so he performed abortions. That is until one day things didn't go as planned. In a new book, Two Patients, Dr. John Bruchalski says the story of his, tells the story of his conversion from pro-abortion to pro-life and a lot more. He joins us now. Doctor, you're not only a OBGYN and the author of a new book, Two Patients, but thank you so much for joining us. Why did you write this book? Well, I found that, and by the way, thank you so much for this invitation. Um, I wrote the book because medicine and society seems to be in free fall. We're all lukewarm on this most tragic issue of taking the life of an innocent family member in the safe womb or the supposedly safe womb of its, um, of its mother. And it was not only the free fall, but it's God's mercy, how his mercy really tracked me through my misery mm. to bring me to a place of wholeness. And I've seen it now in so, you know, tens of thousands of my patients who are women. And there's real hope in providing a real alternative to abortion as good medicine. That's why I wrote it. Wonderful. Let's, let's dive directly into this story. You performed abortions during your residency and then one day, a moment of truth happened. What exactly happened? So I really believe that my mom and dad formed me very well in the Catholic faith. However, I can't say the same for my high school and college Catholic education during the 70s and 80s. So here I was buying into the, you know, the status quo that abortion is needed for happiness and wholeness. And for the first two years of my residency, that's what I did, I gave women what they wanted. So there I was one night, and in one room, because the mom wanted the baby, I did everything in my medically human power to help save and keep that baby inside of her. Mm. In the other room, separated by a six-inch wall, the mother didn't want the child, and therefore, at the same gestational age, the fetuses, the babies, the unborn humans were the same. And yet, because one mom wanted, one mom didn't, I broke her water and induced labor to end the pregnancy. Well, I didn't take a good history because the mother didn't want it, and I was just doing what she wanted. I then put it on a scale, and I had to call the neonatal intensive care doctors. And lo and behold, buddy, a wonderful Catholic woman physician, NICU doctor, neonatal intensive care, walked in and said, hey, John, you have to stop treating my patients like tumors. Wow. She surveyed the room. She knew what I did. And then she said, uh, you're better than this. Women need better than this. Let's have coffee tomorrow. <laughs> and it was wow. that cognitive dissonance between, separated by that wall now, can you imagine, you know, God's sense of humor? I was working at an evangelical pregnancy center at night, like mm. an assembly of God church mm -hmm. that believed that there, you could provide an alternative. So not only did I have the dissonance of two patients, you know, dictated by a mother's desire, but I was beginning to see that there was another option besides abortion on demand. Amen to that. Well, you say that this defining moment professionally also led to a defining moment spiritually. I'm sure that there's also been an element of forgiving yourself there. Can you tell us more of that, that journey? Oh, that is so, once again, bud, you have your finger on the pulse again of your audience. So many of us who've suffered the trauma of abortion, whether it's the provider, the doctor, or the mother, or the family, or the siblings, because those ripple effects really move through society and keep us in shame and anger, especially when we're told it's not supposed to mean that much. Well, I can tell you that two years earlier at Guadalupe, I heard a voice that said, why are you hurting me? And I blew it off. You know that line, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts? Well, I did that. Yeah. Every abortion I did hardened my heart. And yet when that doctor the next morning suggested that I go to Medjugorje to find peace. Mm. Well, my mother two days later did the same thing. I went and it was there that in prayer, I found the love 
and sacrifice and mercy, the word beloved, mm. moved from the sacred and immaculate hearts into my heart. And instantly, I knew my leprosy was real. I wanted to ask forgiveness. And I believe that it was the intercessory prayer of my parents and so many people in your audience who prayed for conversion on this issue helped me uh, back in 1989 um, fall to the ground, allow the Lord and Our Lady to work in my life. And once you touch God's mercy, uh, sir, there is no going back, but you're loved. And every time you begin to go back to the victimization of yourself and Oh, the justification or the shame. His mercy frees you for his love. And when that fills you, just like the visitation, you got to go share it with people. So I came off the hill, went back home, and uh, the mother said, Johnny, practice excellent medicine, see the underserved daily, and follow the teachings of my son's church and faith and tradition. And that's what we've been doing ever since. The Tepeyac OBGYN Center has been there for 28 years now. Well, I tell you, uh, you know, you, you're bringing me <laughs> to tears right now. Uh, oh. Dr. John Bruchalski, thank you so much. The author of the book, Two Patients. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless.